Despite the somewhat gloomy account of gender in the newsroom I've presented, things are changing for the better and there is enormous energy being put into building resources for change and working towards gender equality. We've already seen how public and legal challenges over issues such as pay and ageism have made a difference. And another major intervention has been the Expert Women Initiative, which has led to really significant increases in the number of times that news programmes approach women to be experts on a topic. Suzanne Franks explains. This project on expert women started a number of years ago. It was pretty evident that the vast number of people who were being called to speak as experts were actually men. And this really reached ahead in, uh, I think, 2012, when there were two items in the same week on the Today programme, one on breast cancer and one on teenage pregnancies, where you had a male presenter interviewing two men to talk about breast cancer and teenage pregnancy. And that caused quite a stir and a lot of um, objection and gradually arising out of that it became more and more evident that this was really quite a wide wide problem. So on the, on the basis of that um, we started a project which was really just to count the number of experts and to count who was being called upon to speak with expertise in the broadcast media and that, that was really the genesis of this, of this project. In addition there are numerous new initiatives and programmes underway that are raising awareness and really making a difference. These include research, policy codes and directives, mentoring schemes, family-friendly policies, databases, guidelines, pledges by individual media organisations and equality and diversity audits. Research across and beyond Europe is helping to give a fuller picture of the opportunities for different genders in media organisations, as well as showing how gender is related to other characteristics such as age, race, class or disability. The European Institute of Gender Equality has been leading on developing indicators that will help us to measure and assess how well media organisations are doing, for example on gender equality and decision-making roles, the numbers of women and men on boards and the range and existence of different policies, codes of conduct and mechanisms for measuring gender equality. Organisations like creative diversity network Diamond also assists by giving reliable data about the characteristics of people working on all UK originated productions. Gender equality audits are an important part of regularly assessing whether progress is being made. These range over numbers, roles and pay of different staff, something now seen in all large organisations in the UK and used successfully by Austria's national broadcaster to work towards equality. Family-friendly policies are a major component of many organisations' equality policies and often have the effect of making things better for everyone. The presentation software company Prezi in Hungary is a leader in this field, offering all its staff flexible hours, uncapped holidays, daycare on site, as well as welcoming children in the workplace. Training schemes to encourage women into technical fields such as sound engineering or post-production or to inspire girls to go into coding or programming are becoming more and more widespread. Examples include DigiGirls in Croatia and NetLights training in Finland. Mentoring also has a role to play in supporting women to progress in their own careers. In Germany, the Female Journalists Association has mentored several cycles of women, particularly younger women and those in freelance roles. Ellen E. Jones also talks about the forceful effect of working with inspiring women. Yes, I've never lacked for female role models in journalism. Many of my editors have been women and have, and have been exceptionally good bosses. Like I, I worked for Lisa Markwell when she was editor of The Independent on Sunday. Um, she was great, like she always had time for everyone to, and gave great, you know, constructive feedback and stuff. Sarah Sands at the Evening Standard was also, you know, whatever you thought of her politics, was a brilliant boss to work for. Everyone who worked for her loved her. Um, and um, uh, Charlotte Ross, another deputy editor at the Evening Standard. So I've always quite often worked for women and found them to be good bosses and, and found them inspirational as well. Codes of conduct can also be helpful. Many journalist unions now have guidelines and resources available about sexual harassment and increasingly journalism schools teach about equality issues. Since Me Too brought the issue of sexual harassment to prominence,
there have been a wide range of initiatives launched designed to root out harassment and to offer better support when it does happen. Pledges are also a useful tool in the struggle for equality. The BBC is one of a number of media organisations that's promised to have 50-50 by 2020 in on-air, on-screen and leadership roles. It follows major publicity from Hollywood attempting to make the film industry more reflective of the reality of American society. Finally, as we heard from Suzanne Franks in relation to women experts, databases can also be a useful tool in advancing greater gender equality. Spain and Denmark have also used this tool with success and it has been extended beyond Europe to Jordan and Lebanon. Having the data to make the arguments and lobby for change should not be underestimated. Change is happening and all these initiatives have their part to play in making journalism a fairer, more equal profession that reflects the diversity of our societies. Thank you for watching and good luck in your own career.